Yeah, so uh, last but not least, but uh, this time it, uh, I will I will be taking the stage, <laughs> uh, right, for a talk I prepared especially uh, uh, for the event. Uh, it's um, uh, it's a current research that we're conducting uh, as part of the API Days conferences series. Uh, it's a, a research about uh, API Term of Services, which is uh, which is a topic that. Uh, uh, a lot of people um, are aware of, but they don't directly consider it, and that can lead to some really big challenges if you are not if you are not able to uh, uh, to address it in the right way. So uh, I will ask if we can have my slides up. Yeah, perfect. Uh, and and the goal actually of this research is that how we can have a creative commons pattern for API term of services, and at the, at some point how we can go from human readability to machine readability on term of services because actually nobody reads them. Nobody reads them unless, uh, until you know that you had to read it uh, because someone cut your access or because someone revoked your uh, tokens. So no, that's the idea and that can completely kill your business. So where do I speak from? It's mostly from the uh, the nine years of API Days conferences uh, and you can follow me on uh, at uh, Mejawi here uh, on, on Twitter. Also, my latest publications are book on continuous API management, uh, European Commission research about APIs for government, and a specific research on GDPR data portability. Uh, the work really we see that it's not there, it's not there yet. And glad to announce that in December, the second edition of continuous API management will be out. Finally, I designed the API industry landscape. So it's a landscape of uh, the top 600 companies, vendors, tools, open source tools that you should be aware. So again, if you want uh, a copy of it, uh, don't hesitate to reach me on Twitter or directly via email or via LinkedIn. And so, yeah, uh, let's say uh, it's also to know more about the current project that I will share. Uh, this project is called API TOS or API Term of, Term of Service towards a creative commons model. And you can follow the uh, the project or participate or sponsor the project on opencollective.com slash API TOS dash CC. And I will be glad to present you a little bit what's behind the scene. And actually to understand where do we come from, I will quote, um, uh, Jeff Lawson, CEO and founder of Twilio, who is the world is getting broken, broken down into APIs. That means that every part of the stack of a business that the developer might need to build is eventually turning into APIs that developers can use. So we have this multiplicity of APIs and services that we are able to assemble to build advanced products. Do you, did it, did, did it remind you something? Yes, the industrial revolution, the classic supply chain and logistics were actually uh, um, uh, manufacturers, manufacturers and companies have been specializing themselves into one part of the supply chain, focusing highly on the on one value proposition. And then the goal of these manufacturers will be to orchestrate all of these uh, value proposition into finally uh, composing a product. So some companies are focusing on one value proposition, some companies are orchestrating the value proposition of others. And we used to do this with uh, specific business contracts, suppliers contract and, and delivery contract that was taking a lot of time sometimes to set up a few days, few months, few years uh, for establish a relationship. But now on the digital world, these relationships are just represented by the APIs you integrate and they're represented by the term of services. When you integrate an API, you integrate the whole world behind it, the, the teams, the companies, and actually the term of services that allow you to use it in a way that fits your business needs. Uh, but actually, no, nobody reads term of services. I don't know if you know this great project called term of service didn't read, who is this biggest lie on the web, uh, and they try to make sense and make these term of services really easily readable. Uh, let's say that API term of services are program, probably the biggest lie of the programmable web. Nobody reads them, but they may have uh, some uh, really important concerns that, uh, that can come after your business. So API term of services are, are really important because we used to think APIs only as technical interface, but actually they are also legal interface. This is where there is a contract happening. The API term of services represent this legal contract of use that you have for uh, your the APIs, the services behind it, and the data you have access to. But this also, as we've seen in the conference, a product interface, right? That it will that will engage some new uh, business potentially for you because you consume someone else as a service. You focus on your core business, and it's also about how you can reuse 
the data, right, or, or the service, how you can resyndicate it, how you can how you can be able to resell it, maybe, right? So APIs are not just technical interface; they're also legal and product interface for uh, that represent uh, a contractualization, uh, a, a specific framework for reusing what you are that you are accessing to, and that has some business elements behind it. So this is what I call welcome in the as a service economy, or in other words, the API economy. Everybody will consume other as a service via APIs that represent technical business and legal contracts that define the relationship between all of the, these entities. And you can see that the API economy, some API products are actually worth a lot of money, like Stripe over 1.5 billion, uh, one, $105 billion, uh, Twilio, $60 billion, Adyen, $20, Avalara, $15 play. A lot of companies actually are really um, powering the digital infrastructure as we know it uh, with great services delivered by great APIs with term of services that you should read at some point. So what have learned? What we have learned in the past 10 years, you know, the one who doesn't know about the past, the errors of the past are condemned to repeat them. So let's 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 go back in the past really quickly to understand what happens. We are put that it's a lie. Uh, it's a lie because you know we've seen so many so many changes that completely killed businesses. For example, some company have changed their API business model. Look, Google Maps APIs have changed price. It was they had a free tier, then it was paying for all everybody at some point. Is threatening the future of some companies that you know from one day to the other. Yes, the full company business model is completely disrupted because a term of services has, have changed uh, in uh, in an API provider. Uh, you can see other and Twitter killed my business. An inside look in, at the ecosystem crackdown. Yes, at some point, Twitter could be either an infrastructure for messaging or a media platform for short microblogging, micro messaging. They decided they, they were more a media platform, so monetizing with ads. So when you monetize with ads, you want everybody to be on your own network. You don't want other to resyndicate the, your network, you know, to be able to uh, deliver other experiences. You want people to be controlling your networks to see your ads. So Twitter decided to kill hundreds of thousands of applications using the API just because of this business model change. And even in 2015, Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey apologized to say, yeah, we want to reset relations. Actually, in 2018, they destroyed, again, a lot of outside apps by killing one of the API most of them use. They claimed it was not for term of services, for, but it was mostly, mostly at this point for uh, 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 performance issues and, 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 and uh, let's say, to, to remove some legacy stuff. But again, they could have done it in a way that didn't, didn't kill hundreds of thousands of applications. So Slate made a great article about this Twitter strategy. Again, Twitter is still a great company that's worth a lot of money, but let's say the relationship with developers is, is, quite, is quite broken. Uh, LinkedIn, also uh, some startups like PeopleLinks is one of the most famous, but uh, yeah, uh, were completely based on their uh, the, the platform's API. And when actually the providers kill the API, or at least remove your access, sometimes for good reasons, sometimes for gray reasons. Uh, like, yeah, it can completely kill your uh, your business. So, uh, yeah, even if you rely on big platforms API, they can cut your access at any time. Last one, but just to say it's not only about social networks or whatever. Uh, yeah, Google acquired a company called QPX. It's a company that was doing, uh, let's say, a flight price comparison algorithm um, for express uh, for airfare data. And actually, when they acquired it, the FTC in the US, the, the regulation said, you can't kill API access for five years, uh, right, because of you for antitrust rules but after five years what they what what did they do they they cut the api access of all the competitors that was actually using qpx uh, because they wanted to use qpx only for themselves so um let's say that of course it, you you know that when you use someone else as a service you rely on them at some point but the term of services are extremely important to be readable and to be understandable about your business so uh, for the solution, maybe, you know, uh, one of the solution about API business model uh, breaking changes would be uh, like some engagements. So for example, Google announced enterprise API label to fix product killing reputation. So now they have a, a label that will say, okay, these APIs will not kill them, will not cut them for any reason or whatever. And actually they engage themselves contractually. So we can see the term of services have a role to play here. 
and you can read the Google Enterprise API claims. You know, it's about stability, it's about support, uh, it's about uh, uh, trust with customers. You will see everything we want to see in a term of service. About performance in CSLA, you know, again, you know, when the company has a lot of issues or at least is down, uh, you know, like what, what, what does that mean? Uh, what are the implications? What are the service level agreement contracts? For the one who experienced the down, uh, a, a downtime for with a cloud provider, it's really hard to go back to your cloud provider to say, look, hey, it seems you were real slow at this point, so I want my money back or I want the compensation that's in the contract. It's really hard to negotiate like that. So one of the solutions would be sometimes something that has been launched a few days ago, which is an independent third party who are able to assess performance of APIs and application uh, to know exactly who is whose mistake uh, um, uh, to actually know if the service level agreement was respected or not, and if the compensation needs to be made. Again, it's about term of services enforcement here. About API copyright, again, uh, you may have heard the Google versus Oracle uh, uh, API, API copyright case. Uh, and um, uh, yes, and maybe the, the, so in a sense where Oracle has sued Google for uh, using, copying the same API uh, copyright, the same design of APIs uh, for some uh, internal Java and Android uh, APIs. But yes, Supreme Court f f ruled that it was a fair use at some point, but one of the solution could be the term of services to declare your API copyright into the API commons. So Kin Lane, the API evangelist, launched this project with uh, Stephen Wilmot, uh, CEO and founder of 3Scale. Uh, but yeah, if I put declare my API design into the API commons, nobody can claim API copyright on it. Again, it can be in the term of services. A few other points that really bother developers is the breaking changes. You know, you know about how can we be transparent about breaking changes uh, and warn people enough in advance, uh, you know, contractually to actually uh, nurture a developer community that 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 and and that will be uh, uh, trusting us. You know, so that's that's really the idea. And you will you will see that in many many APIs today, they can mostly do any time uh, any change any breaking change without notice. They try to do notice, but contractually it's not the case. If they engage themselves contractually to do the notification, that says something about how they want to treat their customers. So term of services can help. The solution could have been uh, a project that, that stopped called the API changelog, you know, to be sure that to know exactly when things are changing on APIs. And also some companies have this right once run forever policy. They completely engage themselves to say, look, we will never break APIs. Uh, we will keep them live as long as someone is using it. We will just stop adding new features to them. We will add features to other versions. And when you feel ready, you will go to a new version. But they have this right once rent forever policy. Again, but it's hard to, earn, to know which company is doing it. Uh, a term of, uh, of easily understandable term of services could tell directly to a company or a developer uh, the policy behind it. So the so how we could solve these problems with uh, the power of the Creative Commons pattern. So for people who know, the Creative Commons pattern is, is a way to really, really do, uh, uh, to make complex copyright laws and trademark laws and whatever, extremely easy to understand for the general public. Mostly about if I see an asset, if I see a, a, me a media asset, a picture, a text, a file, uh, a video, Am I, am I able to uh, reuse it? Am I able to modify it? Am I able to resell it or redistribute it? Simple rights, but that we, for, uh, let's say, a legal environment that is really complex to understand uh, for the average uh, user, but at least it's now resumed into smaller rights, not small, into a smaller uh, set of rights that can be extremely easily understandable. So uh, uh, yeah, so as we say, uh, there our mission is to, pro is to provide license and public domain tools to give every person and organization in the world a free, simple, and standardized way to grant copyright permissions for creative and academic works, ensure proper attribution, and allow others to copy, distribute, and make use of those works. You see the, the, the link with potential APIs in the, as a service economy? So let's see a little bit what Creative Commons offers. So you may have seen uh, this license, but and you can go on their website. They have a great tool, extremely simple, with two questions. Do you allow adaptation of your work to be shared? Do you allow commercial use of your work? 
simple answer is yes, no, yes, as long as long as other share like, or do you allow commercial use of your work? Yes and no. And depending on what you select, you have a specific license, extremely simple, complex, cut trademark, copyright laws, it resumed into simple choices about what you want to do with your uh, with your rights. If you allow adapt, as if you allow adaptation of your work to be shared, and you allow commercial 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 use of your work, you are what we call a selected license attribution for that O International. This is a free commercial license, easy to understand. Maybe you don't want to, add, to allow adaptation of your work, but you allow commercial use of your work. You know, you are you are attribution no derivative no derivatives for Pan O International. Maybe you allow adaptation as long as other share alike. You know, so it's attribution share alike for Pan O International. That's it. Uh, uh, if you allow commercial use of your work. Maybe you allow other to share alike, but you don't allow commercial use of your work. You you are attribution non-commercial share alike for .dot international. But at least, and with the logos here, you can see that yeah, it's Creative Commons. Uh, uh, you allow other to share uh, non-commercial for non-commercial use, but you have to give attribution. So it's a Creative Commons with attribution, non-commercial uh, with uh, share alike. You see how powerful it is when you don't know exactly what you can do with a picture with four logos and four names. You can really understand. So uh, they uh, to make it only to to not make it only uh, uh, human readable. You can also put some HTML tags, or or you can copy some code on a page for people to know exactly what's happened, what's happening with a uh, with a picture. So to begin some machine readability. And you can see, like, you can go from most open to least open. At least it's an easier framework, uh, easy to generate as a producer of the content. That's extremely important. Easy to read as a user, and easy to understand as a user. So that's really what uh, what what's the the big the big point with Creative Commons that we let's say we try we'll try to do with with API term of services. So two great books that actually inspired us for uh, for this project, The Code and Other Laws of the Cyberspace from Lawrence Lessig and Remix, Making Art and Commerce Thrive in the Hybrid Economy. So we will be remixing, we will be uh, 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 using everybody else's infrastructure as a service, but we need, just need to have fair roles and be sure we respect the creator, but also to, uh, uh, to know exactly what we can do with the APIs we use. So the, the, the project is really how we can build a creative commons for API term of services as a contract to automatically read, control, and enforce API term of services between infrastructure and application. So that's really uh, the idea here. And the project was one of the 13 projects who received the grant from the Ford Foundation. So it's a, a, a bigger project to think about the web's open source infrastructure and make it more equitable. One of the sources of inspiration also was the API license wizard. So it was made in 2013 by uh, Andreas Kron uh, called the Swedish API license. It was a small wizard where actually you can answer some questions. I don't know if you can see here, but uh, you can answer some question about IP rights, source reference, user trademark, personal data, disclosure of personal data. And actually when you say yes and no, yes and no, yes and no, they generate you a, a human readable term of services, right? Uh, uh, based on this clause. Again, it was just for the Swedish law, but that was that was a good start uh, for this, and actually, this is uh, a little bit where we are. We are currently at the end of the phase one, where we did a lot of qualitative interviews, and now we are addressing the phase two to propose it to the community to have quantitative uh, feedbacks. So, uh, yeah, the challenge with it is that APIs have potentially more degrees of complexity uh, than just the cl classic Creative Commons. Uh, APIs represent service with valuable capabilities that can be critical. So it's also a big challenge to be sure we address all these uh, capabilities and the criticality uh, into a few logos and icons. All right. And also APIs are technical product and legal interface. So there is a little bit more complexity than just the copyright aspect of, of one asset. There's also two things that we've discovered in interviews. The API neutrality principle, like being sure that you never, uh, you never do uh, gatekeeping about who is using your API. Even if it's a competitor, uh, you allow access to the API. Like really, you be, you behave like an infrastructure, like a little bit like AWS is doing, allowing other retailer to be on AWS. Or and there is also the API copy left idea. So it's that APIs provided, but consuming another API must be published under the same term of services than the consumed API, or at least include some of the clauses, like the uh, the share alike in a sense, API. 
So two principles that we really did not anticipate before. So, and to make them uh, human readable, we also split them into two parts. The operational parts, you know, it's a, the revocation policy, term issue notice, business model and payment policy, analytics tracking, reuse of the data, white labeling uh, or mention, and also a technical element, which is about really the breaking change policy, deprecation period and versioning, caching policy, the service level agreement management, and the quota and rate limiting. So we've seen also these two parts here. So, for example, we did a graph about all the dimension of API pricing, just to tell you how it can, it can be really complex. So you can see here 11 dimensions of pricing about when uh, that 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 can be applied for APIs, about the freshness of data, the data or the service, uh, the flow, how it's coming, is it, uh, uh, do you receive the bulk of data or just do you stream uh, data, how about how precise, you know, so you, sometimes you you pay uh, APIs uh, uh, a premium fee to have more precise and more accurate data. Uh, about the scope of what you can access, do you have data on just one country or hold the whole world? Uh, the performance, the maintenance, the support, and the license of the data you gather. So there is already a lot of dimensions. So we will have to do some trade-offs here about deciding the right level of exposition of, of information. So for example, uh, just to say for the business model, the reuse, the commercial reuse, attribution and trademark, neutrality, copyright counterparts. Yeah, we, we made interviews and this is what we get. So some people say, yeah, we should at least say if the business model is free, if there is a free tier of paying. For the reuse, is it free reuse? Is it controlled? Like for example, many companies say, okay, you can reuse, but not competing with us. Or is there no uh, allowed uh, reuse? Is it commercial reuse allowed? Uh, do you need attribution? For example, some APIs who provide scores, they oblige you to give the source of the score when you provide the score and they allow you, uh, you know, so that can be one, one, one element there uh, of reinsurance. Uh, do, are they neutral? Do, do they allow anyone to use them or do they do some gatekeeping? Uh, do they enforce API copyright or do they oblige uh, companies who have a kind of counterpart to, to do something in exchange of accessing the API? You know, So that's uh, the idea. About uh, the technical aspect, uh, the revoc you know, the revocation policy, it can be anytime for any reason. Whoa, really risky. Do they give a notice period or do they guarantee that they will never revoke an API access uh, or a break a version, right? Uh, about breaking change, you know, do they give do they give also a notice period? Uh, for standard level agreement, do they enforce it? Do they even give compensation to enforce it when it's not when it's not respected? Uh, but the cacheability of the data, do they allow you to cache some data for performance? Uh, do you, they control the, the cacheability of the data for user and user experience? Or do they, uh, 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 yeah, or do they just uh, 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 don't allow you to do it? How, do they allow you to store the data? Do they allow you to modify uh, uh, the data? Do they allow you to resyndicate the experience in another UI? Uh, you know, uh, and how do they manage authorization? So all this stuff can be also part of the firmware, but you understand the complexity we're facing. Last but not least, the legal aspect, uh, you know, the liability of the info provider, is it, do they, are, are they liable about the info provider or not? Uh, does it involve personal data that needs to be GDPR compliant or a GDPR UK compliant or CCPA compliant? Yes or no? Are the, the, the data accessible sensible, like a sensitive data? Yes or no? Is it compliant to some regulation like HIPAA for healthcare or uh, other regulation? Yes or no? Or do, are, are they, for example, certified on security? Yes or no? So you can you see already the degrees that are a lot bigger because we talk now not just about rights, but we talk about business and infrastructure. So it's it's kind of a, a little bit more complex. So and then the matrix we're drafting is it at some point does the uh, what we provide help people to uh, have impact on to make decision to, about yes or, or no about consuming an API or but how much also what is important for API consumers that's also the trade-off we have to find for example API copyright everybody says it's extremely important to be sure that copyright is not enforced but it, nobody really cares when they use an API you know about when they use they see the value and not this part of the clause so we need to be sure that we are, we had, we select the right uh, elements uh, for um, uh, uh, that will help people also to make uh, the, the right decisions. 
to make them machine readable, there are a few ways. We can include them into documents that describe APIs, like API.json, for example, who is a, a format to describe an environment around an API, like the, where are the specifications, where are the portals, where are the sandboxes, and where are the machine readable term of services. Or it could be at some point later, but be included directly into the Open API uh, uh, document standard, uh, directly uh, via the Open API initiative as a part of the of the API description with a, a section dedicated to uh, term of services. And last but not, just to finish, just to say uh, how we can fund it. Actually, it can be actually a, a, there will be a funding model for new API insurance startups who actually will read this term of, read machine readable term of services and enforce them uh, uh, and give the proof about who needs to pay what. And actually, companies can pay this API term of services uh, to be rated, uh, right? Uh, to have audit and rating. The API providers can pay to have audit and ratings. And they can also can pay kind of a license fee uh, in case of, a, of, a, of an issue, of a default, right? Uh, and your new API insurance startup would give the ratings about that. And if there is a default, like something that is, was not respected, actually the, the insurance company, the insurance startup could compensate uh, uh, all the users who are directly affected uh, by the fees collected by all the API providers. So that's, that's just an idea. So you can contribute the to sponsor the initiative on https uh, slash slash opencollective.com slash or directly contact us at contact at apitos.org.